83 years ago, the world saw the birth of an amazing institution that has been uh, fighting for freedom, democracy, and human rights. Freedom House has been defending these values and, and thanks to Freedom House, uh, even though there are many issues throughout the world, the world is today a much better place. To discuss what Freedom House is doing and what are their plans and the accomplishments, I have the privilege of presenting Michael Aframowicz. He is the president of Freedom House. He led the Levine Institute for Holocaust Education and the genocide prevention efforts at the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum. He worked as a national editor at the White House correspondent uh, for the Washington Post. He is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and has held fellowships with the German Marshall Fund uh, at the Hoover Institute. Mike, welcome to this part of the world and welcome to Razón de Estado. Um, there are alarming signs of authoritarianism throughout the world. You know, you've been very busy, you know, trying to help and protect activists and people from the media, uh, but it looks like you're going to be busier with what we're seeing in the world. Tell us what's happening. Well, we're in the middle of what's called a democracy recession. Every year for the past 18 years, democracy has been in decline and authoritarianism has been on the rise. Every year for the past 18 years, more countries have suffered declines in political rights and civil liberties mm -hmm. than those that have had improvements. Just this past year, in 2023, more than 50 countries suffered declines in political rights. Only about 30 had improvements. So we're in a very serious problem mm -hmm. all over the world yeah. in which really democracy is on its back foot. Mm -hmm. Do you think that one of the reasons that this is happening is because you know, the, the, the criminal states, uh, the corrupt uh, mafias that are basically participating in politics and then, you know, having access to power in different governments in different countries, that they are being so effective because the last mission they are accomplishing is judicial independence. They are destroying the judiciary systems. Well, I certainly think there are many reasons for this decline, but I certainly think that if you look around the world, whether it's in Russia, Poland, uh, Guatemala, uh, Nicaragua, uh, and many other countries around the world, uh, judicial independence is under attack. Mm -hmm. That is a major phenomenon of the last two decades of democratic mm -hmm. decline. And why is that? Because uh, authoritarian leaders know that judiciary is the last line of defense. It's a mm -hmm. checks and balance. And they know that by really undermining the rule of law, undermining judicial independence, that they can uh, have a free reign to do what they want. Yes, and would you say that these authoritarian um, people are being held by the drug cartels in some parts of the world, by groups that are compromised with corruption, so they need, you know, a criminal environment and especially impunity. That's why they need the judiciary systems on their side. Absolutely. I mean. I, Honestly, there, there are many different reasons for why this is going on. But no question, in many parts of the world, including here in Latin America, you have a situation in which uh, criminal cartels, mm -hmm. drug, uh, drug syndicates have kind of insinuated themselves into the sinews of power and are really corrupting uh, the very fiber of our democratic mm -hmm. societies. Okay. Would you say that what's happening to the media, you know, the independent media all over the world, not only has to do with, has, with which has happened in technology, but also, you know, especially the authoritarian regimes, which are more and more every time, even though they call themselves democracies, they have been pressuring to basically weaken the independent media and using, you know, the, the, the social media to basically confuse people, you know, uh, do the fake news and basically uh, manipulate the systems. I think it's a very good point. I'm a former journalist, mm -hmm. and so this is a really hits home for me. Uh, as I think about democratic decline, I think it's clear, and the Freedom House reports, we have the annual Freedom of the World report, it clearly shows that the decline in media freedom, the decline of independence media is really a driver of global democratic decline. This is happening all over the world, where you see uh, news organizations going out of business, large news deserts, 
really a failure of the, of the, of the system to generate the proper accountability uh, mm -hmm. for governments. Let me give you one number, Dionisio. Uh, when this democratic recession started, Freedom in the World found that only 14 countries scored the lowest score, zero, in media freedom. Mm -hmm. Today, it's 33. Yeah. So that is a dramatic upsurge in attacks on yes. the media. Yes. Freedom House, an amazing institution, has done a lot for Latin America, but we need more. What else can we expect from Freedom House in Latin America? Well, Freedom House has been very active for many years in Latin America. We, uh, we, are, we do a lot of independent reporting about the state of freedom in Latin America through our Freedom in the World report and Freedom on the Net, which is a state looking at uh, online human rights. We are an advocacy organization, and we also are very much helping civil society groups, political prisoners, activists who are, who are, who are working on the ground in authoritarian settings like Venezuela, like Cuba, uh, Nicaragua. Uh, we were very active in trying to help mm -hmm. with the release of 220 political prisoners uh, last year from the Ortega regime. Mm -hmm. So Freedom House is very much mm -hmm. active in Latin America, but we want to be even more active. Because yeah. we really think, if you look around the world, uh, there's a lot of focus in Washington on Ukraine, on Israel, Gaza. But in Latin America, mm -hmm. it's, uh, we really see very dangerous mm -hmm. trends that we're quite concerned yeah. about. We have 20 seconds left. How active is Freedom House going to be in the Venezuelan electoral process? and with what's happening to Maria Corina Machal. We are very concerned about what's happening in Venezuela. That is one of the key democracy stories in Latin America. If, uh, if, if Maduro is allowed to uh, knock her off the ballot, it will not be a free and fair election, and that will be potentially the demise of yeah. democracy in Venezuela. Well, it's so good to have Freedom House close to Latin America, and of course, the world needs you, and, and it's great having you as, as, as the president of this amazing institution. Thank you. Thank it's an you, honor Michael. to be here, Dionisio. Yes, Thank you no, so much. Thank you very much, and let's stay in touch. Okay.